So how many times you were on a shoot, arrived home, dumped the content of your card, started editing only to realize that you had about 30 takes of the same angle with little or no difference in between. As a stock video content creator, this is a very easy trap to fall into, since we are thinking of each clip as an individual unit and sometimes obsess over getting that right, forgetting that there are many other ways to add interest to our shoot. Today we'll take a look at some ways to add variety to our shoots, yet keep a common story denominator in the mix that ties them all together. Hello everyone, my name is Gabi Bukataro, the Community Education Specialist here at Stocksy. Thanks for viewing this video and I hope you'll find many valuable tips in it, so follow along. I've been a stock media content creator for almost a decade and if there's one single ingredient I wish I would have added to my shoots from the beginning, that is variety. Shooting for stock puts us in a quantity mindset by default because of the sheer nature of our craft. We tend to think that the more clips we have in our portfolio, the better performance we'll have. However, when we don't carefully plan to offer useful variety in our clips, this mindset can work to our detriment, filling our library with too much noise where clients have a hard time finding something useful or worse, they just give up and leave. So where should we start adding variety and excitement in our shoots? Of course, the subject we film is key. There's no doubt about that, but also the way we film it. Today, we'll touch on a few aspects we should always consider while on set. Where possible, think of your shoots as independent, self-sustained stories. Even if we shoot multiple clips, when we put them together, we should be able to tell a story. Think of a story arc that has a beginning, middle and ending. What do you start a story with? Well, you start with the exposition by laying the foundation so you can film establishing shots of your surroundings and the settings. These can be done using wide angles or aerial shots from a drone. Pay attention to people and places in the frame you might not be able to get model or property releases. Next, you transition to the action where you cover the actual subject matter. This is where you move in closer, try multiple angles and approaches and leave no stones unturned. Make sure you have good scene coverage, multiple takes, close-ups, portraits, action shots and some climactic shots that will be the highlight of your shoot. And finally, you end with some sort of a resolution that wraps your shoot in a creative way. This can be thought of as a solution to the start of your story, a change that brought the viewer through the whole story up to this ending point. And naturally, there are those types of shoots where it's difficult finding a story. In those cases, try planning each clip as a meaningful happening, worth keeping, unique from the others and standing on its own. To help you add variety and interest to the way you approach filming, here are some useful tips to look at once you're on set. The 30 degree rule. This simple rule provides guidance to the cinematographer for moving the camera at least 30 degrees for each new clip relative to the subject to avoid jump cuts when editing. This inherently will add variety to subsequent shots of the same subject by the angle difference. Focal length difference. The 30 degree rule is often combined with changing the lens focal length at least 20 millimeters for each axis move. This can become cumbersome, of course, by changing lenses every time you move. So the easiest way to do this is by taking a step closer or away from the subject for each 30 degree move. Alternatively, you can for instance cover the scene with a 35mm lens, then switch to a 55mm prime or similar for a more intimate approach like close-ups or extreme close-ups. Angle variety. Think of these as vertical angles starting with the eye level as your base, then follow that with a low or high angle, extreme low or extreme high, birds or worms eyes views, Dutch tilts or POVs. These can be easy ways to add a different perspective to each clip and set it apart from the rest. Shot size. Here we're talking about distance from the subject. The main ones are the wide, medium and close-up shots. You can of course always use a subset of these main categories to add detail to your shot size. For instance, you can start with a close-up of someone's hands cutting through the onions, then use an extreme close-up for the knife cutting through the onion stems. You can again achieve this by either using a zoom lens or changing the physical distance between the camera and the subject or by simply a variety of prime lenses. Movement. Next, you can add interest to your shots by using a variety of camera movements. These can be dollies, tracking, static, roll, pan or tilt, orbit, push in, pull out and zooms. You can combine these with motivated or unmotivated camera movements as we've mentioned in the previous tutorial. Equipment or rigs. 
Another way to add interest and variety to your shots is to use certain equipment or rigs for a mix of handheld, gimbal, tripod, drone, crane shots or steadicams. Here it might be helpful to have two or more cameras already attached to these items with individual operators who can film simultaneously. Frame rate variety. Use various frame rates for later manipulation in post-production like slow motion, time lapses or hyperlapses. Keep in mind that whatever you plan on slowing down in post-production should be filmed with a high frame rate. Slow motion is worth when filming movements that are fast enough in real life and would benefit from slowing down, otherwise trying to slow down motion that is already slow in real life will make your footage brutally boring to sit through and watch. When working or making a final clip selection you want a cohesive coverage of the entire shoot leaving only the shots that are unique and advance the story. With that in mind, analyze each shot individually and ask this question, does this clip contribute to the entire narrative? If it does, it stays. If not, it is not worth keeping. Well, again, we've burned through some valuable aspects of basic cinematography, but honestly, nothing will stick if you don't put in practice what you've learned. So for your next shoot, why don't you try adding only three of the ideas we've mentioned here and see how much variety will this add to your clips. Do you have any other cinematography tips or ways to add variety to your shoots that you might want to share with us? Leave a comment below. But thanks so much for watching and I hope you found useful ideas in this video to adopt in your filming style. And if you did, why don't you give a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll know firsthand when we are posting a new video. With that, I'll see you in the next one.